and welcome back to the final episode of Starting Out in CNC, the series that goes to 11. Obviously I've barely scratched the surface really of the whole CNC thing, but this is the end of Starting Out in this series. I've gone literally from a couple of boxes of parts to a fully built, fully functioning CNC machine. There'll be plenty more to come of course, but that's going to be carrying on with CNC. The Starting Out, well that's done and dusted. Before we get any further in, I do want to say thank you very much to the guys at Do's Nest, not just for the opportunity to get involved in the whole project, but also for their patience while this series of videos was completed. I think we initially talked about doing a five-part series and here we are at episode 11. That's how it goes sometimes. You just have more to say and more to cover. It's important to emphasize as well that whilst I've tried to cover a lot of detail involved in making a CNC machine like this, videos like these and the excellent training videos on the Oozenest YouTube channel are not a replacement for reading the manuals if you're getting involved yourself. As I said earlier in the series, I haven't been paid to make these videos and the opinions, like the mistakes, are all mine and mine alone, as is this Oozenest original WorkBee CNC. Whilst it was provided for the purposes of this review, I did have the option to purchase it and I've exercised that option because I think it's a fantastic machine even if I did build it. So if the starting out is finished, well where do we go from here? Well, as a couple of more experienced uh, CNC viewers have pointed out, I haven't actually calibrated this machine yet. I've squared it up reasonably well, but the truth is, whilst it's not bad, it's far from perfect. And the reason I've left it this way is that fairly obviously, I won't, it won't be staying here hanging off the bench like this. Its final resting place will actually be next door where there's a bit more, uh, where it's a bit more out of the way. So I didn't want to get too far down the setting up line and then have to do it all again after it's been moved. I do need to do some work next door to clear the space. I've got to put in some new lights and so on before I can build a dedicated workstation for it, possibly with a downdraft table. So keep your eyes peeled for the video or two about that when I get it done. And don't forget as well that the best way not to miss one of my videos or any of my future videos come to that is to subscribe to the channel and to hit that bell as well to be notified whenever I put up something new. Now as far as new things go or upgrades go on the actual machine here, whilst I think I've shown that you can use a basic little cheap and cheerful Katsu router in a CNC, I think it's pretty clear that it's not a great idea. Don't get me wrong, I think the Katsu is an amazing little trim router, incredible value for money, uh, around about £30, but absolutely not the tool for this particular job. It's just not designed to run for 30-40 minutes an hour at a time and it is incredibly loud, so this will almost certainly be my first upgrade. I'm not sure which way I'm going to jump in it yet, but the Mafel milling motor is looking pretty good. There are other spindles from the likes of Cress and Fane. The Cress and Mafel can also be powered by the Duet controller board on this machine as well, which is interesting. And yes, I'm learning the world of CNC is a bit of a rabbit hole. And we had some great comments and questions after the earlier videos. Thank you very much to everyone who's taken the time to watch and comment, and I'll address a few of those now. Uh, one comment that came up frequently, especially in the earlier videos, was that it looks kind of fiddly to build. Well, it's true you're not snapping Lego bricks together, but you're not building the Millennium Falcon either. You're making a fully functioning CNC machine. There are over a hundred parts in each of these carriages, for example. And that's where the bulk of the effort goes to get these as good, as accurate as they can be. And yes, there is a certain amount of detail work involved in that, and that's just unavoidable. Following on, a frequent question was, can they be bought ready-built? And I'm afraid the answer is no. It is supplied by Usenest in kit form only. The manuals are excellent and backed up by some great tutorial videos on Usenest's YouTube channel, links down below. Though where Usenest will help out is with the bit that frankly gave me the heebie-jeebies, which was the software install. They can log in remotely to your machine and help you out there. In all honesty, with the mechanical build, Silly mistakes on my part aside, I found to be fairly straightforward and just a matter of following the book of words. And having built it, I've got to say, I have a far, far better understanding of how it works and what everything does. We had a few questions about what it costs, and again, links to the Oozness website down below where you can build and spec a machine online and get a full price as you add to it or change it. But yes, let's talk money. Uh, an Oozness original WorkBee CNC, like this one, the 750 by 750 costs £1,330, including VAT. 
To get yourself up and running, up and cutting, you'll need to add a router or a spindle to that. An Oosnest can supply both the Makita and DeWalt palm routers, or you can supply your own and they'll provide you with an adapter ring for the mount. You'll also need cutters or end mills, and Oosnest can supply these individually or as a starter set. The dust shoe is very useful, uh, but as Ryan, the CEO of Oosnest, said when we chatted in part one, the dust shoe is a pretty good starter project to make yourself, and Oosnest will supply as a spare part this particularly soft nylon brush skirt that you need if you do want to make your own. Other than the cost of the initial purchase, I've added a couple of downcut end mills and a length of extraction hose, so total additional cost of around £70 over and above the cost of the kit. And I guess the big question is, would I spend that again and buy the same machine? Well, that's an easy one. That's an emphatic no. I would buy the biggest machine I can comfortably fit into the workshop here, which for me would be the 1500 by 1000 mil. And this is where it gets interesting, because although the bigger machine has three and a half times the capacity of the work area of this 750, it only costs £170 more, including VAT, because all you're adding is basically the extra extrusion and screw drive. So yes, if you're seriously thinking about one of these, I would start with a tape measure and your workshop floor plan to take a closer look at what you can fit in your space exactly. How long did it take to put together was also a question that came up a lot. And again, leaving aside the sort of fallow period where it was untouched due to pressures of work and space, I've logged in around 60 to 70 hours on this. Now you need to bear in mind that that was whilst shooting video. And shooting video typically extends a project by a factor of three times. So in reality, if I wasn't stopping and starting to shoot cutaways or to reshoot talking heads and voiceovers, then I'd say I've got about 22, 23 active hours in on this project. So I reckon if you're organised with a clear workspace and a clear schedule, you could probably comfortably build one of these in, say, a week of evenings, even allowing for taking it slow and steady on your first build. Now I've got to confess I was quite surprised by the number of questions and comments along the lines of what are you going to do with it. The thing is I've always done this for a living. This is a business and this is a tool which like all tools requires skill and experience to operate effectively. Things I clearly lack right now but things that I do expect to get better at with practice. And that's what I'll be doing with this CNC, using it as a learning platform to see if and how I can fit this into, or perhaps even diversify my workflows, the kind of things I make. I've already had a couple of people contact me asking if I take requests now that I've got my CNC, because there's something they'd quite like, but that's a bit fiddly for them to make, or the commercial versions are a bit pricey, or maybe the shipping costs make it impractical because it's coming from abroad. Whatever, I think there's a whole host of potential opportunities out there that I haven't even considered yet and I'll be sure to keep you posted about those as and when they become available. So there we are, that's the end of my starting out in CNC journey. Carrying on with CNC will continue of course but that's a different journey and a different set of videos. I do hope you've enjoyed these videos though, mistakes and all as I've certainly enjoyed the process even if it did take me well out of my comfort zone at times. Before I go, I want to say thanks again to the guys at Oosnest, especially Ryan Locke and Ryan Christie, who have both been very helpful and endlessly patient, and also the guys at Vectric for letting me have access to their Aspire software. It's very much appreciated, even if I did use it in the most uh, simplistic of ways imaginable. I will get to grips with the more sophisticated aspects of it in due course, I'm sure. And finally, I want to say thank you to you guys for watching and for all your kind comments and suggestions. And of course, to my awesome Patreon supporters, whose uh, continued support of the channel helps me take on longer projects like these and produce exclusive content just for my Patreon channel. That's it for now, though. Thanks for watching. As always, stay safe and stay well. I'll see you next time. Take care.